Jeff Andrew is standing by. Congressman, it's good to see you. I really would like to talk with you about your initial reaction, sir, if you've got any briefings over what's going on or what can you tell us? Well, we knew there was going to be a strike, uh, you know, within these few days. But here's the deal. Weakness breeds war. Strength breeds peace. America first. And so Iran has let us know in so many different ways with enriching uranium and everything else that what happened when we lost three service members, uh, three brave soldiers, what happened when 25 others got injured is, I believe, the fault of this president because he deals on the world theater while he's on his knees. And of course, these things are happening. So now we've got to get further involved. Look where we are now and look where we were four years ago. I am profoundly disappointed with this president. And the bottom Bottom line is, our previous president, Donald Trump, would have said to Iran, continue this kind of activity, because this is Iran. They have proxies all over the world and throughout the Mideast, and they know that we're probably not going to do anything meaningful to them. They should know if they continue this, there's going to be hell to pay. They should know, and they do know, that if we wanted to, we could destroy their nation. But instead, they move forward and are involved with all these proxy attacks, over 150 since October. What do you think is going to happen? I'm angry. And I'm sad for America, and I'm sad for our troops. Well, Congressman, the problem with, with Joe Biden being on his knees and his regime being on their knees is that our service members are dying because of it. They, they, they aren't feeling the ill effects. Our people are feeling the ill effects. What do you make of the first strikes hitting in Syria? Do you, I mean, I, I know we, we could probably uh, chuckle a little bit about the Biden regime not knowing where Iran is. But I think you and I both know that this administration, this regime uh, being run by a bunch of Obama folks, are, are very much in favor and support of the number one state sponsor of terrorism, has made sure this regime is flush with cash. Could that be the reason why they, they don't want to strike interior Iran, do you think? They're letting Iran know that this administration and this president is afraid of them. Iran knows this is the president who unfroze $6 billion. This is the president that took the sanctions off of Iran so they could enrich uranium, so that they would make billions of dollars more to help their cause, uh, their proxies, throughout the world and in the Mideast. So this is, you know, this is more about symbolism. And I hate to say this, this is sad. I don't say it lightly. This is this president having to try to show that even though he's weak and is afraid of Iran, that in some way he's doing something so that, you know, his people can say, oh, the president reacted. He bombed Syria. He did this. He did that. No, he should get on the phone and tell the, the Ayatollah and those leaders in Iran, you're going to become a third world country if you don't cut it out. Now, you either stop now or something bad's going to happen. They wouldn't do anything. They'd back off. But he doesn't have the strength to well, do it. And you know what I feel bad about? I feel bad for the American men and women who are in harm's way. We've already killed three of them. And we've already had 25, some of them profoundly injured. It's, it hurts our country. It hurts our service members. Well, you and I both remember uh, the, the, the Clinton administration when they bombed the Aspen, fa Aspen factory to prove they were doing something uh, against America's enemies. Barack Obama made an entire regime, an entire eight years out of what you're describing, which is window dressing trying to put on a show for the people back home so that NBC and ABC and CBS can say, ooh, look at strong Democrats utilizing military might. But there was a significant lag between our, our service members dying and the Biden regime acting in, this, in, in these retaliatory strikes, Congressman. I'm wondering what your thoughts are on the, the Biden regime giving Iran time to move their assets to make sure none of their crucial infrastructure was destroyed by an American airstrike. It's almost as if, I'm not saying this happened, but just, you know, look at what's happening. If a phone call was made, 
to Iran. You know, look, we've got to go through a process here. and We've got to look like we're angry. And so we're going to bomb Syria. We're going to basically leave you alone. Uh, nothing that terrible is going to happen. And we're going to give you a few days. We know where their installations are, for God's sake. We know how Iran's involved. We know who their proxies are. We could have had an immediate reaction. I mean, this is a joke. You send out the message, well, in the next few days, to give you time to get your act together, but so that we look good politically, we're going to bomb. I am, again, I am sad for America. I'm sad for the American men and women who are in harm's way, and I am disgusted with this administration. And you're exactly right. You know, on mainstream media, oh, the Democrats are strong. They're really fighting. They're standing up. They're doing something for America. They're striking back. This is not the way you strike back. Our foreign policy is bad, and we're in trouble. Well, you know what, Congressman, I want you to, because you said something there to also. I remember a day, I'm old enough to remember when the United States military would game out uh, retaliatory strikes based on cont contingency, contingency uh, uh, ways of approaching certain incidents, incidences. And matter of fact, there, we're going to be talking to Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer, who 10 years ago, he told me on, a, on my radio show, he said 10 years ago, he took it to the generals. And he said, look, we have got to start getting some contingency operations in place so when X happens, we do Y, and we can dial up a reaction immediately. And he claims that he was told by the brass, such as it is, oh, that just, that's just too hard to do. Are you concerned as a sitting congressman that under Democrats and under, uh, I'm sorry, a brass that has been less than a fighting, a fighting man's brass, that we don't have contingencies in place for when America's enemies do these strikes. And that's why we have to ponder and, and, and navel gaze, and it takes us so long to retaliate when bad actors act up. Look, you know, the bottom line is they're bumbling. They're not focused the way they should be. This is called rapid response. And you, you, unfortunately, this is the real world. So those that are our enemies and would do harm to our friends and would do harm to us have to fear us. Peace through strength. That's not what we have right now. You know, we're too worried. You look at the Defense Authorization Act. We're worried about, you know, we're, we're going to be paying for gender changes. Uh, the military will. Huh. Um, that's not what the military should be doing. We're going to have drag queen ambassadors. That's not what the military should be doing. We should be the strongest, the fastest, the best the most, most focused and make sure that our Americans, our country, and our interests are protected. And you know, I'm not some kind of a hawk that wants us to go and fight around the world. No, I don't. It's just like Ukraine. You know what happened in Ukraine? If we had been strong from the get-go because Putin made noise over and over again, like he did with Trump, Trump called him up and said, man, you do this, you go in Ukraine, hell to pay, Putin backed off. Same thing What you know, with this. You have to be strong in Ukraine, it's the same deal. We weren't strong and just Putin went in. When you are weak, Chris, as a country, and when your foreign policy is weak, it opens you up to war. And every damn time you're weak, you get involved in war since World War II on. I don't yep. want our men and women bleeding all over the world. I want us to be strong so that they don't have to. Yep, American has, America has never gone to war because we were too strong, that's for sure. Congressman Jeff Andrew, thank you very much. Appreciate the time on this breaking news Friday.